Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. For those of you who are visiting, welcome to Transfiguration. Our presider today is our pastor, Father Eric Hill, and he's assisted by Deacon Bruce Public Over. Please rise as we begin this celebration. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. As we gather here on this beautiful day, let us see God's abundant mercy and love. You came to heal the contrite of heart, hear me. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us into everlasting life.
Let us pray. God of my giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Moses said to the people, Now, Israel, hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live and may enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. In your observance of the commandments of the Lord your God, which I enjoin upon you, you shall not add to what I command you, nor subtract from it. Observe them carefully, for thus will give you evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations, who will hear of these statutes and say, this nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has gods so close to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are as just as this whole law which I am setting before you today? The word of the Lord. The one who does justice will live in the presence of the Who thinks the truth in his heart and slanders not with his tongue? nor takes up reproach against his neighbor, by whom the reprobate is despised, while he honors those who fear the Lord. not his money at usury and accepts no pride against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never be disturbed. the letter of St. James. Dearest brothers and sisters, all good giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no alteration or shadow caused by change. He willed to give us birth by the word of truth that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. 
humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deluding yourselves. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Pharisees with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, did not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed. The purification of cups and jugs and cattles and beds. So the Pharisees and the scribes questioned Jesus. Why do your disciples not follow tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? And he responded, well, did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites? As it was written, this people honors me with their lips but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandments, but cling to human traditions. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from the outside can defile that person. But the things that come out from within are what defile. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lavishness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within, and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
So I have been Catholic my whole life. I was born into a Catholic family. My mom and dad took me to St. Matthias Catholic Church in Crown Point, Indiana to be baptized and was raised in the faith ever since. There were times in my growing up years that I kind of said I really don't need to go to church. I got confirmed. I stepped away from the church until I was a freshman in college and started coming back only because the Newman Center had free food. <laughs> I love the church in all its wonder, in all its awe, and even at times in all its sin. One of the pitfalls of being Catholic is that we have a lot of accoutrements. One of the beauties of the church is we have a lot of accoutrements, things that make us, uh, that are tangible, touchable things of, of Catholicism, right? We have a rosary. We have a lot of prayer books. Well, now we have a lot of apps, right? But we have a lot of prayer books that we can hold and carry. We have, we, many of us, if we're allowed to in our neighborhood, uh, the HOA allows it, we can have a statue of Mary or Joseph. We hang our rosary from the rear view mirror in the car. Uh, we have bumper stickers, all kinds of things that people know that we're Catholic. One of the pitfalls I have as a priest is that when I wear the collar outside, it's either um, an attractor, which isn't always a good thing, or it's like, ooh, ah, priest. I remember when the scandal was going on all these years, and I remember I was stopping by the mall uh, in, in Buford, and uh, I walked in with my collar, and the woman pulled her child close to her. And it, um, yeah. So that's one of the pitfalls of being Catholic, because people know who we are. If you ever watch a movie or a TV show, what does always the clergyman wear? It always looks like a priest, because if it looked like a Protestant minister, you wouldn't know who he was, or she. So they make him look like a priest, even though they might be Protestant. And so one of the difficulties is we can very much look the part of what it means to be Catholic. We can do all the things, we can have all the accoutrements, but then are we really living the life that God has called us to live? We can have the rosary, and I'll, there's some people who never prayed the rosary, but when they come to plan the funeral, they go, we gotta make sure that mom has her rosary beads that never came out of the holder that they were in in her bedroom. But gotta have the rosary beads on mom's hands. Are we really living the life that God has called us to live as Catholic people? And that's kind of what the gospel is talking about today. You know, the Pharisees were going, but you're not doing these external things. You're not following the law of, the, of our forefathers. They're doing the wrong things. And Jesus says, <laughs> it's a very wonderful word, you hypocrite. You guys are a bunch of hypocrites because you guys do all the right things externally, but then you live a life, and he names a long list of sins that are not very good. And sometimes we go about those sins somehow thinking we're okay because we live the external life as a Catholic. We come to Mass, we have our rosary beads, you know, it's always interesting to see, because those of us who drive in Atlanta always have to pray, right? <laughs> and it's always interesting to see cars that maybe have the rosary hanging from the rear view mirror, but then <laughs> they do gestures <laughs> when they're driving. And they're not always two hands praying together. Sometimes it's a way that they're pointing the way to heaven. <laughs> and, it doesn't match with a life lived and the externals portrayed. Thus, we become hypocritical. The list of sins that Jesus references in today's gospel is long and at times hard to hear. 
Evil thoughts. How many of us had those? No, this is not open confession. <laughs> Evil thoughts. Hmm. Unchastity. Hmm. Theft. I just take a few pens from work. Theft. Murder. I never murdered anybody, Father. But we sure do with our mouths, don't we? Boy, we can cut people down real quick, and they're not even in front of us. And we don't even have to have them in front of us anymore, or with somebody else, we just type away about this person or that person. And some of the people we cut down on social media, we don't even know, have never met, will ever meet, will never know. But by God, we're able to just tear them apart. Adultery. Hmm. Greed. Malice. Deceit. Licentiousness. Envy. Anybody ever be envious? Blasphemy. Anybody ever say GD? Arrogance. Oh, God, no one does that anymore. Thank God. I'm too good for that. <laughs> Folly. Folly doesn't mean that you can't have fun, by the way. That word that is used in the Greek is actually a word that means um, that you're doing wrong things. So uh, one of the commentators I heard, he said, do you text and drive? That's folly. That's just, you know what you're not supposed to do and you still go ahead and do it anyway. These evils come from within. It's our actions. It's us that are living a life that is, does not match often with the light that we portray. The statue of Mary's in our front yard, everyone gets, you know, statues, typically not a Protestant thing, so they know we're immediately Catholic, right? Um, and yet, we don't live a Catholic life in the neighborhood. You know, we're mean, we, we yell at the neighbors, and we take our dog next door and let them deposit their um, business in their yard and never pick it up. We're not a good neighbor, then the person that ne lives next door goes, they're not really a good Catholic. And so we look hypocritical. And so as much as we like to at times think that we have kind of all of our externals together and we look the part, we have the right uniforms, you know, we have our transfiguration shirt or our jacket or our name tag on when we go to the store, and then we treat the person at the, at the checkout like they're not even a person, and they go, oh, they go to transfiguration. <laughs> great, sounds like a great place. <laughs> and sometimes we just miss it. We miss it. And the apostles, the, the scribes and the Pharisees were so concerned about whether or not someone washed their hands. And yet they were living lives that he knew were evil. Because it's so easy to pick out the small things, right? The minor things. Oh, you don't do that right, or you don't do this right. And the person looks and goes, have you looked in the mirror lately? <laughs> have you had any thought about the way you live your life? But it's so easy for us to go, yeah, you didn't do that right. You didn't do this right. You didn't hold your hands right. It's one of the problems with piety in the church oftentimes is that people go, can go, oh, they don't hold their hands the way I hold my hands. Or they don't kneel the way I kneel. What are we doing? We're worried about such petty, stupid things, and then we're living a life that is sinful and hypocritical. And Jesus reminds us in today's gospel, look, <laughs> it's not the stuff that's out there, it's the stuff that we put out there. We live in a world today that desperately needs the presence of God displayed and lived, do we not? No? Oh yes, okay, just checking. We need it. 
Look at the news, whether it's international news, which is what is being done in the Middle East is because of hatred. Hatred, one to another, at its most basic root. And we can say, oh my God, those people over there. And then we treat each other, family or friend, in some of the same ways. We didn't kill them, but we're so angry at them and we treat them with disdain. Why? That has effect. It has an effect on us as we live it, and it has an effect on those who receive it in our lives. And so before we begin to point the fingers across the ocean at that group or this group, we better be willing to look at ourselves and realize that perhaps we're not living the life we're supposed to be living. Even though we have all the things in order, we have all the things that we're supposed to do as a Catholic, but we're living a life of sin and think it's somehow justified. We gotta look. Before we were willing to point the finger at somebody else and, and chastise them or condemn them, we better be looking at ourselves. And I say, my, I include myself too. Rarely will you ever hear me say you. You need to work on that. I don't like that as a preacher. When pre priests do that, I always go, uh, are you the sinless one in the group? Because we're all in the same boat. My sin included. So I'm not pointing the finger at you either. I'm pointing the finger at myself to say we need to look at ourselves and realize that we need to be better Catholic Christians. Rather than sitting there going, but they're not doing that right, and they should do this, and they should do that. If only they were doing the things that I did, they would be better. It's interesting, people always tell me, Father, you know, the, the scriptures aren't up to date. They're, you know, they're 2,000 years old or more. And I said, you haven't read them. How has behavior changed in 2,000 years? It hasn't. The scribes and the Pharisees, we always point the finger at them, oh, those horrible people at the time of Jesus. And it's like, oh my God, I'm that person. I'm the scribe, I'm the Pharisee, I'm the one pointing the finger. I'm the one being the hypocrite. I'm the one that's living the life that's sinful. I'm the one that's not willing to look at myself. I'm the one that's quickly pointing out the other situation in someone else's life and ignoring mine. I'm that one. I'm this one that Jesus is condemning in today's scripture. And before any of us sit here and go, I'm not that person, look at the list of sins. And if you want a longer list, I'll get you a longer list. <laughs> and I always said this to my congregations before, if you don't think you have any sin, ask around. <laughs> Usually your spouse is a great resource for accurate information. Be, and be ready to hear it. We're all in the same boat. We're all people who need to struggle with our sin. And I say struggle, we need to be working on it. Not to do it better, but to realize those things and say, you know what, that needs to go. That behavior needs to change. And never sit back and say, I can't change. Never give that reason to say, I'm too old. This is who I am. Because that's not the case. We all can change. And you're right, we can't do it ourselves. We need to rely on the loving, caring, abundant mercy of God to help us to change. But the things that we're doing wrong in our lives can be put aside. Not just forgiven, because that's the other problem with Catholics. We go, well, you know what, I'm going to do this behavior, and I'll just go to confession. 
See, we have this neat thing as Catholics, you know, I'm just going to go to confession. And by the way, when we do that, that's another sin. It's called the sin of presumption. When we go, I'll just do it knowing I can go to confession. Saturday afternoon, go to confession, I'm all clean, and then there's no desire to change the behavior because I'm just going to do it all over again. Because I can just go to con back to confession. Thank God I'm Catholic, right? No. There's always the understanding in confession that there's a resolve to move beyond that sin, to leave it behind. And so all the things that we have, the beauty of the church, the opportunities that we have, are gifts to us and opportunities for us. But we have to be willing to look at ourselves and go, you know what? This isn't the person God has called me to be. I'm not living the life that I'm supposed to be living. I'm not being the best spouse I can be. I'm not being the best employee or employer. I'm not being the best Christian, period. I can be a better neighbor with God's help. I don't have to be angry all the time. I can turn off the internet some more and, or more and spend some more time with my family that's quality and life-giving. I need to be more in my prayer life and not just five minutes before church so everyone sees me praying. Oh, they're so holy. They come early to Mass. They pray. But the rest of the week, eh, I got to get it all in on Sunday or Saturday night. We're missing it. We're missing the opportunity that God has given to us as Catholic Christians. And this is hard to do. This is hard to look at ourselves and go, wow, I get it. I do it every day. And if I don't do it, you do it for me. You point out my sins. If you haven't already, I know this is kind of like the honeymoon period still. And I'm going to ride the wave while I can. But at some point, you're going to start going, Father, let me tell you. And that's okay, because there's going to be times when I'm going to tell you. Because we can help one another to be more loving, caring, and merciful Christian people that we're called to be. And it's a worthwhile effort. It's a worthwhile struggle. Easy? No. Life-changing, transformative? Absolutely. Awesome? At the end, in the midst of the transition, even that at times is worthwhile. To see the, wow, I don't have to curse anymore. Wow. I can leave that behind. I can get off the, the, the bad things that I'm looking at on the internet. I can let that go. And maybe it's just a simple factor realizing that we admit that we're a sinful people. Instead of putting focus on the external, the things that make us look good, we can start focusing on the things that need to be good in us. And let us now profess our faith. I
and let us offer our prayers to God, our Almighty Father. We pray for the Catholic Church. Help us to be disciples of Jesus in our vision, our leadership, and our parishioners. We pray to the Lord for our nation. May the recent surge in COVID infections and deaths be brought under control and eventually stopped. We pray to the Lord for our military families. May they be consoled at the loss of the loved ones in Afghanistan and receive the help needed for those who were injured. May those remaining in Kabul successfully complete their mission and return home safely. We pray to the Lord for our parish. May we continue to draw together as a parish family and as we forge ahead, overcome the separation experienced during the pandemic shutdown. We pray to the Lord for those who face daily poverty and violence. We pray for the people that do not know abundance or peace in all lands in our own country. We pray to the Lord for the sick, especially those who suffer chronic pain and illness. May their faith sustain them. May they be healed. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the repose of the soul of Tammy Clark, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our deceased brothers and sisters, especially Orlando, Venezuela, Robert Kaluba, Lizzie Bourne, Marie Young Sagasas, Daryl McClingan, and Eugene Leo Smith. May they rejoice in the kingdom of light, happiness, and peace. We pray to the Lord. And for your own intentions held in the silence of your hearts. Father of life, you ask that we honor you with our hearts and not just our lips. Give us the wisdom to discern your will and act as your hands towards others in need. Grant these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen.
the sacred offering, O Lord, confirm us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and the poor, for the sick and the sinner. He became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. O God, who love the human race, who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when as once the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, given you thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom he led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. Grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, 
we may be counted now unto the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory John, our Archbishop, with the bishops, priests, deacons, religious, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our sisters and brothers. Inspire us in words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, peace and justice, that all may be raised up to a new hope. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever Therein commune with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, and all the saints. And we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And so we now pray as our Savior taught us our Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we'll always be free from sin, safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us now share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord.
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Life can be so good Life can be so hard Never knowing what each day Will bring to where you are Sometimes I forget And sometimes I can't see that whatever comes my way, you'll be with me. My life is in your hands, my heart is in your keeping. I'm never without hope, not when my future is with you. My life is in your hands, and though I may not see clearly, I will lift my voice and sing, cause your love does amazing things, Lord, I know my life is in
Renew by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, O Lord, that being the food of charity may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. So I have a couple announcements. One is um, I, I'm a, I, you won't hear me promote one political party or the other from my lips. I haven't done it for 21 years, so please listen to this with all love and sincerity for your care and, and concern, my concern for you. If you're sick, don't come to church. If you have any inkling, if you have any illness or any symptoms of anything, whether you know it's uh, COVID or not, don't come. I highly encourage you to wear your masks. If you look at the numbers, I'm not talking about, again, I don't, it's not a Fox News thing or a CNN thing. I'm looking at the public, Department of Public Health in Cobb County, the numbers are rising. And when I look at COVID numbers, I always look at hospitalizations and deaths. I don't look at positivity numbers because I can be positive and not have any symptoms. But when someone's in the hospital and someone, some medical person felt that they should stay in the hospital, they're sick. And our numbers are really high. So I don't want to have more funerals than I've already had here at this parish. I don't want anyone to suffer. I used to be working in a hospital. I know what it means to be on a ventilator. It's not a good experience. So if you're sick, stay home. I want everybody to come back to church. I want the place full. But if you're sick, please stay home. I was at Prince of Peace. There was one time a lady in the last year. She goes, Father, please pray for me. I said, why? She goes, I am so sick. I said, go home. This is before mass. She goes, oh, Father, I'm just, I just need a prayer because I'll be better if I just go home. Because we did have someone come to, sick, come to mass sick last week and found out there was COVID. So please, I understand the, feel, the feeling of obligation, but don't share your, your experience, your sickness with everyone else. And I encourage everyone to wear a mask. If you, and this is not, again, not a political statement. It's not, I'm not just, okay? Got it, all right. We have another announcement. Rod, would you please come forward? Cliff notes, Rod notes. I met with Father Eric about a month ago to inform him that I did not feel that I had the energy to do the work that needs to be done here. I am aging. I also shared my need to start spending some time with my family who I have only seen intermittently for the past 30 years. And so as soon as a suitable replacement is in place, I will be retiring. I've been blessed to serve such an amazing parish and work with such talented choirs. It's been a joy to watch the parish and the music ministry grow exponentially since I started in 1992. I will continue to be a parishioner here and help wherever and where, whenever I'm needed. You have been my family here in Georgia, and nothing will ever change that. I love you. God bless you. We'll have an opportunity to say um, goodbye to Rod in the month of September. Information will be put out as soon as possible. So, uh, Rod, thank you for everything. Um, all these years of your ministry and service and sacrificial giving that you've done for this community. So, thank you. Ministers of Caring.
Please share our Lord with those that cannot be here this day to he be their healing and peace. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth now to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God.